Ezekiel 30, you read here about how God is going to judge Egypt. And Egypt represents the world. And God says here, I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries, and I will put my sword in the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will destroy them, punish them. And actually, we also read that eventually God would revive Egypt after this experience. This is all the exact language that is used about how God was going to judge his own people at the hand of Babylon, putting his sword in the hand of the king of Babylon, scattering Judah throughout the nations, and then reviving them. So, when God judges or condemns his people, he does it in the same way as he condemns the world or Egypt. And this is why you read in the passage in Corinthians about the breaking of bread, that we must beware lest we are condemned with the world. In Revelation we're told, come out of Babylon, my people, so that you are not judged with her judgment. So the judgment of God's unfaithful people is the judgment of the world. What that means, I think, is that when Jesus comes, and there is the day of judgment, those amongst his people <clears throat> who have been worldly, those who have not come out of Egypt, those who prefer to sit around in the bar with uh, guys from work or the neighbours drinking and go in the way of this world rather than associating with God's people, those who choose always the things of the world rather than God's ways, even though they are God's people, the judgment of those people will be, I don't condemn you in that sense, go back to the world. That's where you wanted to be, wasn't it? That's where your heart is. Go back there. Well, they're under judgment, they're under condemnation, but okay, you will go back there. So there must be a critical separation between us and the world. Doesn't mean we're better than them in, in many ways, but it does mean that we have put our hand in God's hand and we are out with them. We are separated from them and separated unto the things of God. That is the meaning of holiness, separation from and unto. And that separation, as you mature spiritually, gets clearer and clearer in your own feeling and in your own mind.